Good morning, Daybreakers. Good to see everybody this morning. Thank you, Kadeen, for doing the children's sermon this morning. So we're going to be continuing our sermon series, uh, One Another, where we've been looking at the 100 plus times in the New Testament where we see that phrase, one another. And specifically, we've been looking at the commands for one another, love one another, encourage one another, share one another. I think, Ryan, we have that icon for people to see. And today... As Katie alluded to, we're going to be talking about teaching one another. So I'm going to have Dennis come forward. Dennis is going to be leading us in the preaching of the word this morning. And I would just like to uh, practice encouraging one another by saying uh, Dennis has been someone who has done a lot of teaching in my life. I've known Dennis for 24 years now and uh, grateful for the teaching that I've experienced through him to love the Lord with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. So I'll tell you what, let's pray together that the Lord will speak to us through his word, by his spirit, through this this morning. Let's pray. So, Father, it's good to gather in your name and to focus our attention upon you, your son, Jesus, his lordship over our lives, and to think about how we're to admonish one another, love one another, teach one another, we just pray that by your spirit, through your word this morning, that you would do just that, that you would uh, teach us. And we open up our hearts, we give you our attention, we give you our focus, we give you our worship this morning, and we just pray that you would help us to experience you. We pray together in Jesus' name, amen. now How about now on on one it says on there you go hey 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 should i repeat myself hey 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 uh, as i was saying this is our final moment you can all go home and grab your extra hour Boy, that fall, fall ahead, that spring back thing is kind of brutal, isn't it? I want to welcome my son Sam and his wife Kay here. They attend a church in Burlington called The Well. Great to have them here this morning. I am going to talk about you in a minute, Sam, so get ready. And uh, I want to dedicate this message this morning to Jim Tomzak. Kay is here, daughter Kathy from the Atlanta area is here, and you know, if you knew Jim, he was in our small group, right Martha, for a long time, and the man was, he was tall and thin, and he was a, what Isaiah 61 says, he was an oak of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified, that's what, that's who Jim was, that's what he represented, and uh, we're going to miss him, just his presence, when he would stride in, that everything's okay now. Jim's here. You know, so we bless the family and big family. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of family members that love each other and they're, they all gathered together just, was it last night? Okay. Yeah. They had a memorial service together and they were scattered throughout the, the land. So uh, just keep the family in your prayer if you could. Um, I'd like to begin this morning by singing the doxology. <clears throat> since what I have to say to you today, if you read in the bulletin already, has to do with singing. And a little different take on it, but I'd like us all to stand for a minute. <clears throat> Does anybody know when this was written? What is it? 1600s, right. Doxology just means praise, a hymn of praise, right? You guys all know this? Yeah, now you do. One thing about singing is it brings us, it kind of levels the playing field, brings us all together. It kind of brings the commonality immediately. It's there because we're singing the same thing and, and believing the same thing. So let's sing that together. <clears throat> 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly. Let's hear it now. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let's pray. Father, we just delight to sing because you put singing, as one of our songs says, you put singing in our heart. And today, we want to expand that whole issue of singing and what it means to us and how important it is and what it does to your body and, and while it worships and adores you. So thank you for your word. Thank you for everybody here this morning. And for those that aren't here, my goodness, we know that you have plans for good, plans for welfare, to give us a future and a hope. So we stand on your word this morning in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Back in uh, 1973, uh, I was a senior in high school, and I was on the soccer team. And uh, I think I have a picture here of Denny Boy. Can you pick me out? It's a little small, isn't it? I'm kind of center back. There I am. Yeah, much younger, my hair was red, and I love to run. And uh, that year, if you look two people to the right of me, there's a guy named Mike. I won't give his last name, but Mike was probably the best soccer player in the state of Vermont that year. The only problem was he was always hurt, so nobody knew that he was the best soccer player in the state of Vermont. Skill-wise... I was a pretty good defender. I was a fullback, halfback kind of guy. Go get the ball from you. I could not get the ball away from this guy. He was an English guy from England, and they just have this DNA with soccer. So I would try to get the ball away from him, and he would laugh at me. And, and, and so he was hurt. But after, after that year, we all graduated. Mike went down to Virginia, and he walked on to a Division I school that was a top 20 school in the nation. He was not recruited. He walked onto the team and made the team. That's how good Mike was. And so Mike played there and was, you know, growing in his ability to compete at that level. And one night he was at a party and there was a balcony and on the balcony was a couch. And he and a few other people all, this, uh, all at once sat down on that couch. And the couch actually flipped backwards, went through the balcony and it's on the second story, and he ended up on the ground. Since that time, Mike has been in a wheelchair. Mike, uh, I've seen Mike a lot after that, and what happened with Mike is that through that incident, he found the Lord, or the Lord found him. And during that time, while he was going through all this, I myself was finding the Lord. And came to the Lord. We both had very dramatic conversions. And one day Mike called me up. He was sometimes in Florida, sometimes in Vermont. He called me up and said, Dennis, let's go to church tonight. Now, I was in a very traditional church I'd been in all my life. I was newly born again. But, I, but he said, why don't we just go to this other church that was more of a church like this? And I said, okay, I'll go. So I walked in. And I can honestly tell you that I don't remember what the sermon was all about. I don't remember what was said at that meeting. All I remember is that when I walked in, I saw a bunch of people worshiping. There were smatterings of hands that were lifted up. There were people that were just with their faces turned up. They were worshiping God. And while they were worshiping God, they were not aware that it was really affecting me. I was really being affected by watching them worship. I saw their, their passion. I saw their commitment. I saw their gratitude. I saw their trust. And, and I even heard a little bit of their theology in that. And so they were communi communicating something to me that was calling me forward. I thought, I, I want whatever they got right there, I want a little bit of that. There was something stirring in my heart. You are so nice. 
Let's give Tina a hand. That's what Tina does all the time. Tina serves, and nobody knows it. That's it. So, so I was being brought forward. They were like this, worshiping the Lord, didn't know how it was affecting me. That moment is still frozen in time. I can almost tell you people and what they were wearing and the whole thing, watching these people in the back worship. Now, when we sing in worship, I'm going to use that term interchangeable. Some people say we just sang three songs. Other people would say we just worshiped with three songs. However you want to say it, most of us, that we don't often think that it's affecting the people around us. We tend to think one-dimensionally, like, Lord, you and me, I'm here to worship you today. We say things like, or the worship leader might say things like, come before, I don't think, I, didn't, was, I missed the very beginning, Lance, maybe you said this, you know, come before, we come before you to bless you, Lord. Or they might say, uh, we hope our worship is pleasing to you, Lord. Or they just would, we would exist in this atmosphere of adoration. It was just us and God in this time of adoration. And truly, that is the primary role of worship, isn't it? It's to worship God. Look at Psalm 149, 1 to 3. Let's read it together. Praise the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord and his praise in the congregation of the godly ones. Israel shall be joyful in his maker. The sons of Zion shall rejoice in their king. They shall praise his name with dancing. They shall pray, sing praise to him with what? A tambourine. I mean, that suggests a little bit of noise. You see the band up here? I mean, we're just following sort of the psalm and the psalms that encourage noise. Gra gracious, gr grateful noise before the Lord. And it goes from our lips and it goes to heaven, and in the Bible kind of says that it becomes incense before the Lord. He kind of smells it, and he goes, well, I like the smell of that. I can smell. It says the same thing about our prayers, that they're like incense before God. It transforms as it leaves us, and it becomes something that smells good to God. He just enjoys that experience. You and I were made to worship. We are worshiping beings. I don't know, you know, life is all about your purpose, isn't it? What is your purpose in life? What is the purpose of life? Well, once you determine what your purpose is, you know, at your job, you know what your purpose is. You, if you don't know what your purpose is in your job, you may have a hard time fulfilling your job. Purpose is so important. And what is it the old Catholic thing used to say? The, pur the purpose of life is to love God and, yeah, and worship him forever, Right? That's what we were made to do. So when you come in here and worship, you are just inching yourself forward to the way you've been made. This is who you are. This is how God made you, to be like this and not be like this. Not horizontal, but vertical. So the more you do it, the more you are fulfilling your identity of who God has made you to be. Yeah, it feels cumbersome sometimes. It doesn't feel, you know, easy and, you know, exactly what you want to do just then. But you're becoming more like what you were created to be. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So, but today's scripture, our scripture, I, again, we can go home. KD, and you already preached it. What's the deal? You know, what is the deal? Scripture today speaks of another dimension to our singing and our worship. Another dimension that is kind of surprising. It's one that not only adores God, but also affects the people around us, and thereby makes it so important that we do it together. Along with this vertical dimension of God, I worship you, I love you. You're, why are you so good to me? Ugh. There's this horizontal dimension. There's this thing that's happening around us that's affecting the people around us that we don't even think about very often. Now, this scripture today may surprise you in what I'm going to say about you, but I, I'll darn guarantee that you probably have experienced it. That you have experienced this. So here's our scripture. If you want to stand today, Colossians 3.16. Oh, it's so hard to stand after you've been sitting for a while, but it's so good. It gets the juices going and you get to be the... Yeah. This is a 316. Now, there's a lot of 316s in the Bible besides this one. Oh, John, what? 
Yeah. How about 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy 3.16? All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for correction, for reproof, and training in righteousness. Check out the 3.16s in the Bible. Here's another one. Let's read it together. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. You may be seated. Here's our title today and our outline. Ta-da! Teaching with our song, the horizontal power of worship. We're going to start with number one. Our singing teaches and admonishes others. Can you put that scripture back up there, uh, Ryan? Let's give Ryan a hand back there, man. He does such a great job. And Jordy. Yeah, Jordy. Good job, you guys. Oh, my goodness. I love people. Uh, I'm going to start with like the second half of the verse and work my way back up. Is that all right? I'm going to start at the end and then go that way. Um, now, you would think that this verse would say, okay, bear with me, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you, blessing the Lord with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Now, that appears to be what it doesn't say, does it? You would think that it would say, well, wait a minute, if we're doing hymns, songs, and spiritual so songs and singing in that one-dimensional aspect, you would think that it would say, with all wisdom and teaching, worshiping the Lord with psalms and hymns. But it doesn't say that, does it? What does it say? Read it with me. With all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another. So what is going on here? I don't often think that when I'm worshiping, when I was just worshiping with, as Lance was leading us today, I'm not thinking that you are teaching and admonishing me. And I often don't think that I am teaching and admonishing you. But what does the scripture say right here? With all wisdom and, 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 and admonishing one another. That's a horizontal effect as well as a vertical effect, multi-dimensional. Teach and admonish. We got those words. Think of these words. Teach and admonish. I think we got them on the screen. Teach and admonish. Teach. Everybody say that. Teach and admonish. Teach and admonish. When you come to, when we get to done the service today and Lance leads us a couple more songs, I want you to think about teach and admonish. That what you are, are doing just then may be affecting the people around you by, by your worship. You know, we often think, oh, you know, I can't wait for worship. I mean, worship for me is the best part. I mean, I've been a worship leader for years also. And I preached. Being a worship leader is really fun. It's the best job on earth. It's just, yeah, you just... So, what's happening in that worship? It appears from the scripture there's a lot more happening than we think. Right? Yeah. Scripture says something else is going on. That part of the purpose of singing is to affect the people around us. And I'll show you in a minute how that works. Now, I, when I think of teaching and admonishing, I, I usually think of words that are spoken, right? Right? Like, we speak words. So when we teach, we speak words. We don't sing words. We, yeah, you got it. Usually, word, usually that is done by speaking. Kind of what I'm doing now. <laughs> In fact, you and I, most of us went through 12, at least 12 years of school. And then we did other school. Maybe, maybe another four, eight, who knows how many years. And we sat there and listened to somebody teach through talking and speaking with words. That's what they did to us. Our parents, would, we would be taught by our kids. Our, our, our kids would be taught by their parents. You know, you very seldom didn't hear the mother say, Oh, Johnny, please pick up the toys in your, in your playroom. She wouldn't sing that. She would say that, right? And then, Oh, oh, Billy... Please, when you leave the house, don't forget to make your bed. Oh, oh, oh. 
that's pretty bad. I've had a cold for five years, so I just... But, you know, the point is, we, we don't sing teaching and admonishing. We say it. it it's what we do. You know, I, I've never heard Brent sing a sermon. Although, are you preaching again before Jesse comes back? Who would vote that, Je that Brent sings his sermon? <laughs> All right. All those in favor say aye, right? <laughs> this is on tape, right? This is good. Not tape, but, you know, uh, old days. I've never heard Jesse sing a sermon. You know, I went to watch my son Sam. He's a professor and a researcher at UVM, electrical engineering department, and I went to listen to him teach. And I didn't hear him say, you know, oh, the inversion factor we use to find the common base of the... <laughs> That's pretty bad, isn't it? I heard him teach. It was like being in the United Nations. There were people there from all over the place. It was amazing. But I heard him teach, and he taught by using words. But here, this scripture is suggesting that maybe by singing, we can do some of the same thing. You know, there is the preaching of the church, and then there is the singing of the church. You realize most of what we do on Sunday morning, the largest blocks of time, are given to what we just did at the beginning. We sang, right? The second largest block of time is what I'm doing now, the preaching. We have the singing and the preaching. And, of course, don't do the announcements. We can't have, not have the announcements. We have to have the announcements. But usually they're shorter. We do the thing with the kids. It's shorter. We, we teach by talking. But there's a large amount of time given to this, the preaching of the church or the singing of the church. So apparently from this scripture, you sing, you teach and admonish me. I sing, and I teach and admonish you. Okay, let's just see how it might work. Ready? I have to blow my nose because I've had a cold for five years. <laughs> Anybody else raise your hand on that? Yeah. Dog, gun it all. Okay. One thing you don't want to do is blow your nose when you're up in front of a group of people. Okay, hello. So you come to church, and you're just not feeling it, man. Like, oh, I'm going to go to church. You're going to worship. Some people don't come for the worship. They come after the worship because they don't want to be there for the worship. I know people like that. They just, you know, they just try to not be around when people are singing. <clears throat> so you come to church, and you're feeling yuck. It's been a tough week. Finances are down. You've got a relational problem, a family problem, things going on at work. And then, and then you're, so you're just, you're just kind of numb. You're walking in like, okay, I, you know, all these people are going to sing now. There you go. Let them sing. And I'm just going to sit here and kind of bide my time. Well, <clears throat> suddenly this song comes up on the board. <clears throat> you know this song? Let's sing it. Been faithful all my life. You have been so so good with every breath that I am able. I will sing of the goodness of God. Now you're coming in and you're looking at that and you're going, "Boy, I haven't been thinking very much about the goodness of God lately. <laughs> I don't really." know what I'm thinking these days. And yet this scripture speaks of, I think it's uh, one of the Psalms. I think it's Psalm, I, th I wrote it down here. I did not write it down here. Yes, I did. Psalm 136. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is what? What? Suddenly, you're sitting back there going, you know what? I forgot about that. That song suddenly brings faith back into the heart. So, Suddenly, you have just been taught and admonished by that song. Have you ever experienced that? Come on, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you walk in and you go, I don't want to be here. I don't want to sing. I can't stand the preaching today. Nothing's going my way. And we got a little naval deal going on. Not the Navy, but the naval. We're right here. We're looking at ourselves, right? Ever since the fall, man's problem is we're looking at ourselves, 
and we got a, and suddenly they noticed they were naked and ashamed. They started looking at themselves. That's our eternal problem. You can trace the root of our problems to the fact that we're thinking about ourselves. That's why when we worship, hopefully we put our head up a little bit and say, okay, God, I'm taking my eyes off me and I'm putting them on you right where they belong. And suddenly this transformation starts to happen inside of us. And we go, why didn't I do this a few days ago? You suddenly, you're, te- you're taught and you're admonished by the song that was just sung. And everybody in the room is going, oh yeah, God is good. Yeah, every, with every breath that I am able, oh baby, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trip and fall. I'm going, to, I'm going to just experience this. This is what really is the truth. And the truth has been evading me and I'm back to the truth. And then, and then, you come in, and maybe your, your theology, you're wondering, is there really a God? Your theology is kind of wobbling a little bit, and suddenly, this song goes up. You've probably sung this before. Let's sing it. Go ahead. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me i once was lost but now i am found was blind but now i see oh yeah i forgot it's by grace i forgot that i'm a wretched and i god's grace saved me it's like the book of romans and the book of galatians and the book of ephesians and the book of book of book of book all over the place this little thing, I'm going to move it. I'm going to end up in your lap. Because, right? All of a sudden, your theology that needed a little bit of strengthening, right? While everybody else in here is singing the same song, and they're going, yeah, amazing grace. I can't believe the grace of God. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who will set me free from this body of death? The Lord Jesus Christ. And suddenly, your theology begins to fire up again. Your faith begins to fire up again. You were just taught and admonished. So if nobody sings it, nobody gets admonished. Nobody gets encouraged. Nobody gets exhorted. If we come in and we go, nothing happening, is there? But we come in and we say, I don't care if I don't feel like I'm going to offer sacrifice of praise today. I know this right thing to do. I know that God is worthy, that my feelings are as fickle as the weather. I'm going to give God the glory that is due His name. <laughs> then you come in on another Sunday and you've got a problem as big as a mountain. You know, I love where I live in Williston. When we drive home in the interstate, right, dear? We, we come over. South Burlington, and we hit the flats coming in five miles from Willison exit. And there's Mount Mansfield. And there's Bolton. And there's Camel's Hump. And you just feast your eyes. Every time you feast your eyes. We lived in Colorado, right at the base of, what? Cheyenne Mountain and Mount... No, yeah, NORAD, but what's the big... They climb the big mountain. Pike's Peak! <laughs> oh, Pika Pika. We lived out there, and the mountains were beautiful. And you just... Some, it's something that takes you away. It just takes your heart. It makes you sing. And, uh, and so you've got a problem that's as big as those mountains. And you come in, and suddenly this song goes up. You know the song? Will somebody start it? Yeah. Come on, let's sing it. Forgive me. I have believed in a lie. That you were unable to help me. But now, O oh Lord, I see my wrong. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. And in my eyes and with my song, O oh Lord, be magnified. O oh Lord, be magnified. Somebody once said that God, God made man is in his image, and then man returned the favor. We bring God from here, we bring him down here. We bring our problems up here, and pretty soon we got this thing going. 
we're on under the pile instead of on top of the pile. Well, we're not supposed to be on top uh, under the pile. We're supposed to be on top of the pile. It says in Ephesians or Colossians, thank you, we're seated in heavenly places. That's our position. That's where we come from. And the, the, the mountains get big, and they try to swallow us up, and we try to run from them. But then we come in, and we see this song, and go, oh, what a dummy. What's your problem? God, I brought you down to my size and lower, because I don't really think you can handle it. i got to handle it. And pretty soon, hopefully, the song starts getting through. And suddenly, you and I, we've suddenly been taught and admonished. Our faith is, we're wobbling and our faith is starting to, to solidify again. And we go, yeah, yeah, man. I remember one time I was, my wife and I, we had invested some money with a friend that was in a group, a small group, a parenting group. We lived in Georgia, Kathy, Columbus, Georgia, right? Not far from where Kathy uh, lives. And we're there and this guy said, well, we got this investment, and his nephew, and he's a West Point graduate, and you should invest. So we invested with him. Yeah. yeah, you know the end of that story. It didn't go well. And he ended up using all that money to pay for his living expenses. And call, I called him up one night, and he said, your money's all gone. I cried. It wasn't a good time of life for that to happen. I said, but you know what? I've got to worship. I remember the story of the guy that he was overseas, and his wife and his kids were killed in a car accident when he was over there, and he was in the hotel room by himself, and he just was dying on the inside, and he said, God, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I've got to worship. I said to myself, I've got to go worship somewhere. And there was a church having a service that night in Maranatha. I went to that church, and I worshiped my eyes out. My mountain was really big at that point, but God came back up like this. Because I watched these other people worship and they carried me back in to where I needed to be. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. The word slimes you sometimes, doesn't it? The world, it slimes you. You come in and you're feeling like, oh, I haven't really been carrying myself like I should. I've been this and I've been that. And then this song, which I had in my notes and Mr. Lance back there had picked out. I love it when that happens. This song comes up. Let's sing it. come in and you go, Lord, I'm so dirty, I can't even, and all the water in the world couldn't wash me. And then you start singing this song, and you look around at the people, and they're going, oh, Lord. And then you realize somebody told you one time that the word create there is, is the same word that's used in the Bible in Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created. It's the same word. Same word. Create. When we say Creating me a clean heart. We're not talking about us cleaning each other up, although that's part of it. We're talking about God doing something in us. Like he created everything out of nothing. Nehelio, it's called. He created everything out of nothing. And he can do that with our hearts. He can create a clean heart. He said a new heart. He said, I'll take that heart of stone out of you in Jeremiah, and I'm going to put a, a, a heart of flesh in you so that you can breathe again. You can emote again in a healthy, godly way. You'll be an oak of righteousness. That will start happening in you because of what I do. He always said to Israel when they would just mess up so much and they would idolatrize and they do all these things, and he said, I'm going to come in and I'm going to clean you and I'm going to make you whole again. Now that wasn't something Israel was going to do. That was something God did. Create in me a clean heart. Oh my goodness. Teaching and admonishing. That's what's going on there. Embedded in song and worship is the ability to lift each other up in the midst of that singing and that worship. The word admonish, right? Put in the mind. 
It means maybe you've got something in your mind that's not quite right. It's going to put something else where it belongs. Right? Our problem, our battle is the mind, isn't it? What is in our mind, is it true or not? Truth is either truth. It's kind of like light and dark. You can't have the dark when you have light. You can't have truth when you have lies. You can only have... Did I say that right? Yeah. It, you, you can only... Truth excludes lies. So you can't have light and dark. You can't have truth and lies. You can only have truth. Truth is what? You shall know the what? Truth. And what will it do? It sets you free. We put in each other's mind what is true. What is the truth here? What is the dealio here? And we lay down. We lay aside. It says, it says, lay aside the encumbrances in Hebrews 12. And the sin that so easily entangles you. I can go out that door and I can get into sin, Pastor, and you can say lickety split. Right? I just got things that come at me. You got things that come at you. And we can be in sin before we even clap our hands. So we need constant refreshing. Constant renewal of our minds. Constantly hearing God putting in His mind, putting in our mind, however He does it. One of the ways He does it, I think, from this Scripture, is through our singing and our worship. Here's another Scripture. There are only two Scriptures that talk about this like this. How about this one? Let's sing it. Uh, sing it. You want to sing it? You want to sing it? No. Well, I'm going to sing it. No. This is, uh, do not read it while I take a drink of water. Now notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say, be filled with the Spirit, worshiping the, worshiping the Lord in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Now that's what you think it would say, wouldn't you? Because that's what it says all over the psalms. Worship the Lord. Give the Lord glory. Praise the Lord. Da, 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 da. Let everything that has breath, what? Praise the Lord. Well, what's it saying? Speaking and admonishing one another. You see how important our worship is? You know, we get kind of bored sometimes to come to church and we're going to do the same old thing. I'll tell you a story at the end. Bored is good. Being bored is good. I like bored. I like being bored. I like just steady as we go. I like that. I'll take off into the stratosphere when the time comes, but I like being bored. I like the, the, just the constant presence of certain truth. Just People that leave church and they go off on their own, oh my goodness, I can tell you stories. But what happens is they lose this, what we have in here where we're singing together with a commonality of belief and trust and gratitude, and suddenly you talk to them and they're starting to believe something and you're going, what? How did you come to that conclusion? You see, they get away from the commonality of what we have that sometimes seems very boring, but I like boring. Everybody say, I like boring. I like boring. I like to be bored with the truth because when the other stuff comes in, it can cause all manner of disruption. My goodness. So that's why we do it in the big group. We do it in here. We do it in the big group. You know, the, the church, they say, I, this is not mine, but it, it's two wings of an airplane. You have the big group and you have the small group. How many of you go to a small group now? Okay, small group is the best place to go ever. It's just, you, you go to the group and you just don't have somebody talking at you like I'm talking at you. You talk and you confer. You figure out what's going on in everybody's life. We listen to the testimonies in our group on Sunday, right? Uh, Tuesday night. Tuesday night. We listen to the testimonies. And we had Jesse there. Of course, Jesse's teaching on the screen, and then he's trying to talk over here. It's kind of funny. Huh. What's that, Jesse? No. But you go in the small group. I encourage you in your small group, do a song. One song sometimes will change the whole meeting. It has a way of settling things down. It has a way of bringing a commonality. It has a way of just bringing people together. Oh yeah, we sing that because we all believe that. Suddenly you're all together where you came out of wherever you were coming. A little song does this. It just brings you together. Pretty soon, you're feeling very good and very different. Just one song. Even a call we did on this Tuesday was a chorus. 
I could feel the effect of it in me and in the people around me, I hope, I thought. Now, here's the other thing that happens when we do this together. This second part of our outline, number two on the outline, says that our singing, and read it with me, our singing worship helps us maintain our spiritual equilibrium. Okay, what's equilibrium? Equilibrium is when you have two points. I should have get Sam up here to talk about this. because he. Uh, although when Sam speaks, after about a minute, I don't know what he's saying. Because he's... I mean that in a good way. It's just, it's just, it's in the nano world, and I can't, kind of, yeah. Equilibrium, opposing forces are working on something, and it's stabilized. When this one's working, it's sort of vibrating again, wobbly. When this one's working, right, it's stabilizing. Things are stabilized, right? Think of it in finances. With finances, we have money coming in, the input, and we have money going out, which usually tends to go faster. I remember one of my kids, I think it was you, Sam, said, I can't believe how fast money goes out. <laughs> it's like it has wings, doesn't it? Even the Bible says it in Proverbs. Don't check your money on money because it has wings. It's like gone before you even know it. You put a big deposit in the bank, and then you go three days later and go, what happened? What, what the heck? It, it's just amazing. But in finances, we try, to, we try to find equilibrium. So the amount of money coming in is equaling or hopefully a little bit more, than the money going out. Like this, yeah. In, out. We're <laughs> so we try to balance it out. Then we have to figure out, well, if it's not, ba- if, we're, if, if we're, you know, we're being, here's in the middle, and we're, it's getting shoved this way, we think, well, i got to make more money so I can balance this thing, or i got to, Cut my expenses, right? We're trying to always shuffle in this equilibrium of life. Now, spiritually, you and I live in a world where, where it's draining us spiritually all the time. You're walking out there into a world that's just taking from us all the time, that doesn't support us in our spiritual quest to live and worship and live with the faith and, uh, and, and glorify God in what we do. So it's constantly, we're constantly fighting. In fact, it says our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Struggle, right? It says your enemy, the devil, prowls about like a what? A roaring lion trying to devour. So there's this tension. There's this resistance, this pressure here. And then there's this here. There's this output you're giving out. And then you've got to go back and you've got to go get some input. <clears throat> You've got to get recharged. <clears throat> That's why it says in Jesus' life, it says, he would, in the book of Luke, it says, he would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. I don't know why the Son of God had to pray so much, but he was the most praying man on the face of the earth. It says, with loud crying and tears, in Hebrews, with loud crying and tears. Uh, can't think of the verse now. He was crying to the one... Oh, my goodness. Loud crying and tears, right? Hebrews. Generally, you like Hebrews, right? I know she does. It says, He offered up both prayer and supplication with loud crying, with tears, to the one able to save him from death. You know, you think about Jesus with the little halo that we grew up with. That wasn't Jesus. This is Jesus. He says, He offered up both prayers and supplication with loud crying and tears to the one able to save him from death. And he was heard because of piety. I'm listening to a pastor the other day. He's the pastor of the largest church in the world in Korea. He said, I get up in the morning like a dying man. He said, like, I don't have any oxygen. I need the Lord. I cry out to God for more help. I'm like a dying man that doesn't have oxygen. I need the Lord. I need Him. That's how Jesus lived. So we have to recharge. We can't just come on Sunday morning. My goodness, this is great. But this is nothing. Yeah, no, I don't mean it's nothing. You know what I mean. It's just not everything. You can get what you can get, but when I ask you two days from now what was the sermon about, you go, I don't know, some redhead guy was up there talking. I don't know what he's saying. You, you, we don't remember the sermon, right? Maybe you will remember this sermon. I don't know. Well, I only remember a few in my life, but you know. When you take time with the Lord, You never forget that. It does something in you. 
and the input side brings that life, that spiritual life that you need to carry the load of life and ministry that you carry. You see, you have a ministry and you have a life and you and I need to have enough on the input side to carry that load. Otherwise, that load gets very heavy. We have to have enough on the input side. And this is one place where I think it's the input side. We're... we're <coughs> Singing in worship is on the, it's, it gives power to the input size, side of our, our spiritual life. It does more work in us than we realize. It reinforces, it supplements, it complements what we know to be true. It helps stabilize us and give, give, gives us our spiritual legs again. Hebrews 12.12 12 says, Strengthen the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble and make a straight path for your feet. That's what it's talking about, right? We get weak. We get feeble. We give in. We lay down our resistance. You know, you're part of the resistance. The Bible says, resist the devil firm in your faith. We're part of the la resistance. We're resisting him. And then we give in a little bit. <coughs> we have to get renewed. And we have to have something on the input side. Just constantly input. Constantly coming into us so that we can, we can have enough on the output. Just look at how good and potential this is. Look, would you rather have one attaboy or a hundred attaboys? Huh? Well, okay, but if they're good attaboys, would you rather have one or a hundred? Thank you. So today you're getting one attaboy from me. In praise and worship earlier, you were getting a hundred attaboys. You were getting, yeah, teach, yeah, admonish. Yeah, keep living for the Lord. Keep loving the Lord. Keep moving ahead. Yeah, you got a hundred people singing the same thing you're singing, teaching and admonishing and encouraging you to keep going, to believe in the truth and not in the lie, to restabilize our life. Now, if it's true that in the book of Romans it says faith comes by what? It comes by what? Hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by what? So when you're singing, you know, psalms, hymns, and spiritual psalms. Psalms, we know what they were, the song book of the Old Testament. Hymns, well, these are songs that are made up of parts of hymns, but could be parts of something else, but they still declare the truth. And spiritual songs they put in there, Paul did, because he didn't want somebody just singing, you know, uh, some song that had nothing to do with spiritual content. So spiritual songs. So some people down through the ages have said, oh, you can only sing the psalms. You can't sing these other songs. Well, I tend to like to sing the Psalms because I like to sing Scripture because that's how it helps me memorize it. But I will sing all these other songs because they're all true. I have made you too small in my eyes. It's all true. Therefore, I can receive, I, I can sing that, and I can express that. In, 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 in the Psalms, in 33.1, but in several places in there, it says, Sing for joy, O you righteous ones. Praise is becoming to the upright. That means praise looks good on you. Praise is becoming. Praise is beautiful. Praise does something to the upright. It changes them. It teaches them. It admonishes them. It brings a commonality of faith and belief. It does all these things that you don't even know it's doing when you come in here and you're kind of bored. B-O-R-E-D. You can see what we'd miss if we don't do this. If all of a sudden the church, the church said, you know what, we're not going to do worship anymore. We're just going to preach. Boy, we'd be arguing with the scripture, wouldn't we? So, you know, why we do what we do, why we do what we do, always has to come out of scripture, doesn't it? You can see it in those two scriptures. Preaching, remember, is the primary way that God gets through to us. It's the primary method of evangelization. Preaching will always be, as it was in the book of Acts, the place where God really does His work. But singing, the preaching church, but the singing church is the one that builds up and edifies the body. 
builds up and edifies the body. One is not better than the other. One has a different purpose at times than the other. But you know what? There are places around the world where people go out and they sing in the streets. They just worship in the street because they want to bring that same thing that happens when somebody preaches is they want to bring the truth out to the streets. And you can look it up on YouTube and see all these wonderful celebrations that are going on because people are preaching, uh, singing, and it's affecting people around them. So to realize this maximum, here's my final point. To realize the maximum potential of this. To realize the maximum potential. There's one thing we have to do. Colossians 3.16a. I'm going backwards now. Let's read together. Let the word of Christ richly dwell in you. My wife and I had the opportunity in 1987 to go to Israel. And one place we went was a place called Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea Philippi was... Caesarea Philippi, probably 25 miles north of the end, the north end of the Sea of Galilee. And in, in, uh, in this place is the largest source of water for the Jordan River. You look at this mountain, it's Mount Hermon. It's sort of around the Mount Hermon area. I think we've got a picture. Mount Hermon area. The, the scripture in 133 says it's like the dew on Mount Hermon. It's Mount Hermon. When people come together in unity, it's like the dew on Mount Hermon. The water just flows out of this mountain. I don't know where it comes from, but it comes out of the belly of this mountain. It's pure, cold, crystal clear coming out of the mountain. And it flows down, and it just affects the economic and agricultural vitality of hundreds of thousands of people on its way down to the Dead Sea. Mount Hermon. What we call something that produces, that, that produces the beginning of Produces the beginning of a, of, a, of a stream. We call it the headwater. It's called the headwater. It's the source. It's whatever is downstream is nothing be, unless we have a headwater. You've got to have this thing up here that's producing the stream that's going down here. And so we, saw, we went to the headwater. Oh, this is, by the way, very interesting. This is the place where Jesus said to Peter, can we say that again, Ryan? Maybe they were standing right there. Right there. Jesus said to Peter, who do you say that I am? Well, some, who do they say? Some say Elijah, some say the prophet. Then he says he bears right down on him, just like he does with us. Who do you say I am? God always makes it very personal, doesn't he? Boom, he bores right into us. Who do you say that I am? And he said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Well, there's another headwater, isn't there? <laughs> That's the headwater to the church. Thou art, Peter, and upon this rock, me, Jesus, I will build my church. The headwater for the Jordan and the headwater to the church. Same place. Very interesting. But here's the headwater for the second part of our verse, right? We put that 16A back up there. Ryan, baby. Read it with me. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. That's the headwater to songs, hymns, songs, and spiritual song. That's the headwater to where you begin to affect the people around you as you sing a common song and a common truth that affects the people around you. The headwater is right there. Let the word of Christ what? That word means copiously. It means abundantly. It means just full, 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 full. And then you have it says in Ephesians, the, one, the other one we read, it says... Don't be drunk with wine. Don't be drunk with wine. Don't be drunk with wine, but what? Be filled with the Spirit. The word filled there? Cram. Cram, baby. You know when you cram for an exam? Cram it in, baby. Cram in the Spirit of God. Lord, send Your Spirit to me. Give me Your Spirit. Give me Your Word. Give it all to me right in here. It becomes the headwater for what flows out of there in everything you do, including teaching and admonishing each other with songs, hymns, spiritual songs. Joshua 1 8. You don't have to really look it up. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that's written in it. 
Then you shall make your way prosperous. Then you shall have success. One of my first memory verses. Oh, I never forgot it. Joshua. God said to Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart. But you shall what? Meditate. How often? Say day and night. Night and day. Day and night. Night and day. We never give up. We never, we're relentless. We never quit. We never stop. We never take a break. We never go on vacation. Day and night. Psalm 1. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Where's Rich Ballard? He knows this one. Nor stand in the path of sinners. Nor sit in the seat of scoffers. His delight is what? In the law of the Lord. What does he do? He meditates when? Day and night. Everybody say day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Night and day. Night and day. There is no other time but day and night. Night and day. That's what we have to build is a headwater. We have to ha build a headwater. There, out of that headwater will come this flow, like the Jordan River. It will flow down, and it will water everybody and everything around it, animals, livestock, people, vegetables. And it will have its effect that you can't even imagine that it has. That's why the band can come back up. I'm getting out of here. Because we're going to practice a little bit more of this right now. Right, Nikolai? Come on, baby. We're going to practice a little bit more of this right now. We're going to... And listen, maybe with new ears now. What you're doing is affecting the people around you. When you speak the truth, someone else is hearing it. They may not be having a good day. You may not be having a good day. <clears throat> But remember what the scripture says right here, what the effect is going to be. And we'll all benefit from it. So long.